ask about in closed master. A German friend once told me that Americans live to work while the rest of the world works to live. And every time I travel abroad, I find this to be true. You think you think about work-life balance. And while I agree that you think you think about work-life balance, I also think that you don't think about it enough. <laughs> Do we focus, as Americans, too much on work? We praise Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and people like Steve, Steve Jobs for being great, successful CEOs, but we don't praise them for being great, successful fathers. We praise net worth over net number of relationships. And every time that we profile our leaders, we describe them as highly individualistic, needless people that will have lifelong friends, but will only need to check in with them every once in a while. They don't need to be attached to them all the time. And every time that they meet, they catch up and they go on their way to do more work. Now this is not necessarily a negative aspect of our culture, in my opinion, but it does dictate that as a people, we look to work to fulfill and actualize values of individualism and success. Now I once went through a crisis that brought work-life balance front and center to me. I was in a PhD program at the University of California, Irvine, working towards a PhD in organic chemistry. And like any PhD program in whatever subject, they don't only teach you about organic chemistry. They also teach you how to give yourself entirely to a project at the expense of other aspects of your life. They taught you chemistry as much as they taught you to focus, hyper-focus, on your project for five years, if not more. Now, I remember Professor Larry Overman, who is one of the largest personalities in the circles of organic chemists in this country. And during orientation, he told us in his very imposing voice, while in graduate school, you will have time for two things, the laboratory and a hobby. Most people will choose that hobby to be their family. <laughs> that made me immediately reassess my choice. It made me look at whether I wanted to choose a life of work exclusively for the next five years, five plus years, and or give up a whole number of things that I wanted to do in sunny Southern California, in Orange County close to Laguna Beach, Newport Beach, and Huntington Beach, <laughs> in that order. I dwelled on the issue of forgetting myself for the sake of a credential that would exponentially increase my professional reach down the line. And at that time, as I dwelled on that problem, a mentor came my way. His name was Keith Werpel. And Professor Werpel was someone that gave me an insight that changed my perspective on life. Now this guy's research is so interesting and so clever that I would not be surprised if he was nominated to be a Nobel Prize recipient at some point. And at that time I will be able to say that a Nobel laureate changed my perspective on life. <laughs> Today I'm going to share that insight with you so that you may say exactly the same thing as you reconsider your lifetime and its relationship to your work. B. Dr. Werpel said in his office, he actually went to the board and wrote, Will. Life equals work times the coefficient for work, plus friends times the coefficient for friends, times family plus the coefficient for family, and so on and so forth. Now you can add as many ends, as many dimensions to your life as you would like, but they will always have a coefficient for you. And you will have two conditions to fulfill in the meantime. 
The first one is that whatever coefficient you choose needs to be a number between 0 and 1. The second one means that all the coefficients will add up to 1. One life. So I immediately started thinking about friends. My friend Justin, for example, who graduated from that PhD program and is now a professor at the University of Missouri in Columbia, teaching chemistry, dedicates about 0.5 of his time, of coefficient for work, and 0.15 to his family. So his life equals 0.50 work plus 0.15 family. By contrast, my sister Sylvia, who's been adamant about having a family-centered life, dedicates 0.4 to her <laughs> time <laughs> coefficient <laughs> and about 0.10 for her Facebook coefficient. <laughs> so her life equals 0.15 work, she's lazy, 0.40 for family, and 0.10 for Facebook. <laughs> Now, uh, by now you probably have noticed that the numbers are not quite adding up. It's two-thirds of one. And I am missing about a third of my life here. Why? Well, if you shrink it to one day, you will need about eight hours of sleep. So there's a sleep coefficient that you need to include in here that takes up about a third of your life. So what does your life look like? What is your work coefficient? What is your family coefficient? And what is their relationship to the whole? But more importantly, are you satisfied with those numbers? And if you're not, how will you change them? Because after all, they all add up to one. One life. Madam Toastmaster.